my relationship was pretty private at the beginning. And then we, you know, we opened Me up. Me too. And you open up, that door and you cannot get it back. You can't close it. There's, you can't close there it. are so like, It's open. It's <laughs> bolted. What is up, guys? We are here on the first ever episode of Keep Kicking with yours truly, Kai. I am a D1 athlete at UCLA. I play soccer. I'm a neuroscience major content creation on the side, you know, just dabbling in that and starting this pod. So I'm so excited to have Lolo Fitzmo on for today, my first ever guest. First ever. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> we are riding the wave today. We love to hear that. We have so much to get into, but basically you are a basketball player, Syracuse yes. alumni, content creator as well, mm -hmm. just living the LA life. Just like you. Amen. <laughs> Alrighty, so what to expect for this pod? We've got mental health, the highs, the lows of athletes, of influencers, of just human beings in general. And on this pod specifically, we get a little bit into relationships and the sticky situations that we've both been in and can relate to. Let's do it. Let's start with like background. Where are you from? So I'm from Washington State, the one with Seattle in it, because everyone always thinks DC. Yeah, that's that's honestly what I first thought, and then you said oh. West Coast, and I was like, oh, you're you're above us. Because you're, you're from Eastern Canada. Yes, exactly. Gotcha. So I'm close to Syracuse, where obviously Lola went to university. Um, but okay, let's start with how you got into basketball. Who got you into it? What's like your little Lolo <laughs> story? So my friend's dad was starting a basketball team and they needed enough girls because he wanted his daughter to play and he just recruited us and we started playing. But actually soccer is my favorite sport. <laughs> I've seen your soccer content and I'm like, you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. But no, so I love soccer, favorite sport all the way growing up. And then in like middle school, it switched to basketball and then I decided to play basketball in college. Okay. So obviously high school ball is different in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. So what was your whole recruiting process like? So I was from a smaller town. So all the AAU teams I played on were really far. And I played on like a travel team that was like girls from all over the state we'd practice like a couple times a month and then travel all over the country for practices but I'd have to drive like four hours to go to practice. And was it because you're in high school at this point yeah. could you drive yourself or could your parents were your parents driving you? So actually my parents are the type to like if my dream is to play in college they'll like help me do whatever I need to do to do it I but it. at a certain point they were like if you want to play on this team you're gonna have to like help us figure it out like you're gonna have to drive yourself sometimes so mm -hmm. sometimes I drove myself four hours to go to practice bruh <laughs> okay so and how many how many days a week did you have to drive yourself that was like those practices would be like a few times a month so it wasn't like crazy. okay so nothing yeah. crazy so yeah like I mean like you've heard already I lived with a billet family had to move away from home because right. my training was same thing four hours away but I had to do it every single day we we went to the same school all the team all the girls on the team went to the same school we trained together after school did our film had our lived own together. class yeah so I lived with a billet family I lived with one other teammate at the start lived with another teammate at the end of my okay. high school season but just like craziness like that, like you, yeah. you're you driving extended amounts of time or you're living yes. away from home, blah, blah, blah. All for the investment of playing in college. All to just play in college. But let me tell you, if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have played on my national yeah. team. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have made it to it UCLA. Off, yeah. It 100% yeah. paid off. Do you think that, that your whole journey throughout high school and all the drives paid off? 100%. Yeah. Like it was kind of just, I mean, obviously it's a huge investment, but it's like you do have to believe that it'll work out for it to work like if you're putting all this time in you can't have any doubt that it's not going to work out yeah you have yeah. to just go with it and how did you get recruited to Syracuse what was what was your like decision process um so I was going I was trying to decide between going to UW or Syracuse and UW was like the closer safer option mm -hmm. and I just wanted to go somewhere different and like meet people from all over and just learn a new place and I would definitely not be where I am today if I didn't do that. And obviously it was like a very uncomfortable thing to do to move where I'm uncomfortable and like meet yeah. all new people, be in a new place. But that expanded my horizons so much. And now I feel like I could be comfortable on either coast. I know people from everywhere. It's like That's true. You got connections literally from west to east, east to west. That's yeah. cool. That's like exactly the same thing. Right, me. yeah. <laughs> yeah, like going from east coast, Canada, 
small town to LA, like UCLA. But that was, again, my decision was really came down to Princeton, which was East Coast, closer to home. Mm. Like I I could definitely see my family more, much safer. Or, like, take my whole life and move it across the continent, technically. Like, yeah. what a crazy thing to say. But, but again, I would not be the person I am today. And uh, living in L.A. probably helped your social media career as well. Living in L.A. helped social media. It also just helped, like, social skills in general. Because I feel like if I went to Princeton, I would have been this little bookworm. <laughs> never left your place. Like, it's cold. It's freezing. I would have been it was cold I went indoors. To school. Like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, craziness there. But let's actually get on that topic. Training in Syracuse. Basketball in general, y'all play indoors. Yes. So, this is my biggest question because when I go when I go to the soccer field, I'm yeah. happy because I get to see the sun every day. Yeah, so depression. <laughs> that is. I oh was like, my gosh, I, I could like, tell you so much about this because the weather in Syracuse, like it snows where I'm from. Yes. But my first experience with winter in Syracuse was it would be negative ten degrees, mm-hmm. windy, and then humid. So there's like fog, but then it's dumping snow. So it's windy. There's fog. There's snow. It's awful. It's and awful. And then we're waking up at five in the morning and it's dark outside yep. with big parkas on, walking to the gym, yeah. sad as shit. Like, yeah. I hate it here. Yeah. That's like, I feel like, when would you see the sun? You don't because How do actually. You get your serotonin. There mm. must be like scientific studies that like this is. It's SADS disorder, mm. seasonal affective disorder. What? So yeah. it's an actual thing. It's real. Yeah, well, I know about it because I'm from Seattle where it's like huge because it's overcast a lot. But. Yeah. Also, on that note, during season, you wake up at five and it's dark outside and then you have class all day. And then as soon as class is over, if you're in season, you have a night practice, too, with like walkthroughs and stuff. So you would see zero sunlight all day because it'd be late at night when you get home, too. Wow. That's absolutely crazy. But I feel like with basketball, you can't even you can't even help that because if you're playing basketball in L.A., you're still indoors. Yeah. So I feel like it could have been the exact same situation. Basketball in general, y'all are already like battling the fact that y'all are indoors all the time, yeah. can't see the sun. I, yeah. I, that must be like claustrophobic. Like, yeah, man, <laughs> craziness. So getting into your college career, obviously highs and lows. A lot of things went down, highs and lows. <laughs> let's repeat that. <laughs> um, but no, let's get into a little bit about what you experienced throughout your college career why you opted out of your last season and and kind of the whole coaching situation so my story is a little different I just started talking about it kind of publicly I did a YouTube video on it but in my last season was still COVID it was the second year of COVID but the um so I experienced it in the spring and then it was the rest of my senior year Mm -hmm. and coming back for senior year it was like complete isolation in New York the laws were like way more strict for COVID so that all affected like uh, the governor had all these restrictions on the university to even operate like we had to do all these things or else we weren't allowed to like practice and stuff so we had so many rules like you weren't allowed to see anyone on any other team if you did you'd get in trouble if you took a selfie with someone without a mask on you'd get in trouble there's all these it was just very controlled I'll tag in because I remember watching your YouTube video and, and relating to every single thing you said because during COVID Yes. We were in our dorms. We didn't even have roommates. Like, we were in a box by ourselves. Which is proven to make a person go crazy. Yes. Like, that's Ab- actually torture. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. And then yeah. when I would go see my best friend in her apartment, I had to wear a mask. Yes. And then, like, they even said, like, you were encouraged not really to hang out with your teammates. Yes. They're like, if you have to see each other. Reduce contact by any means. So it was like, even if you guys were hanging out, you had to be six feet apart, away yes. from each other. There's absolutely no connection happening. Yes. And if people did find out, <laughs> you get snitched on right away. Yeah. And you're sitting out of the next practice or you're getting tested for COVID. And I think there was an element there of like, you're all in isolation, so things are hard on everybody. And then it started coming out with people lashing out at each other. Yep. And like, people were snitching, like you said, were like, Everybody had some type of like violations, but people were still telling on each other for their violations and it just made life hard for everyone. But I think there's like a really important point here that like nobody really realized about what was going on with athletes and COVID. And that is all of our coaches were at home with their families. Yes, they were abiding by all of these like laws and Mm -hmm. stuff, but they still went home to a whole family where they're in isolation with their family. And we are on the other side of the country from our family in isolation and it's like people thought that the pandemic just transferred over where it's like oh we're all still 
No, like we were just transported and isolated yeah. and I continued went, COVID. I went from being with my family because we, we went home when COVID got back, yeah. right? So I was with my family 24 seven, love my mom. Like my mom yes. is my person. I never want to leave her. And so it made it a million times harder to go from seeing her every single day for like three or four months to not seeing her at all. And not only not seeing her, but coming home to my dorm. To do online classes all day. To do online classes and not see a single No person. human contact. I would go probably, let's cut training out. Like if I didn't go see my best friend in her apartment, I wouldn't have seen anyone. And like, that's by choice too, because if you sink into a depression, you would have to go out of your way to go see someone. Yeah. You're not going to see anyone in passing. You're not yeah. walking to class. You don't get to exactly. see any smiling faces, get a compliment here, no. like literally nothing. And like <laughs> random, random. But I reflect on this a lot. Hugs. I'm a hugger. Like, I'm, I'm a physical touch person too. Like you literally touch is my love can't language. even be around people. No. And I was like, <laughs> how many hugs did I get in this month? Probably Zero. like one. We and that was it. Like, oh, my best friend real quick. We could even high five at practice. Yes. They said fist bumps. Yes. Fist bu oh my gosh. That's crazy. But yeah, like stuff like that. And yeah. let's go back. Like, I think I was just getting into a relationship. And I had to like sneak. Sorry if no, my I was in a relationship then too because yeah. I wasn't allowed to see him. And no, if I, if I, we weren't supposed to. Which was to. weird. Like, I would sneak. We both went um, to college yeah. together. Yeah. And if I was seen with him, I would have gotten in trouble and yeah. not been able to play. Yeah. And that's like the one thing probably keeping anything afloat is like, okay, I have one thing. I have like one human connection. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Somebody who loves me, like, and reminds me that they love me. No, like, I'd literally have to sneak out to go see this girl. And it's like, we're both abiding by COVID rules, but yeah, like crazy. You can't just ask people to not like, that's like the one human thing. It's a need, it's, it's yeah. a human need. Like physical touch, first of all, but like also just the, the feeling of belongingness yeah. that was like completely taken away from us. And mm -hmm. the only way you can get it is with your teammates. And even then, you guys are doing drills where you're like six feet apart. Yes. Like absolutely crazy. And so to like back up a little bit about what we were talking about, like where the teammates started coming at each other more, mm -hmm. it was because of like these harsh environments. And like I had a coaching staff that went through this big like dramatic thing that like anybody could Google what happened, but yeah. they ended up getting fired. And like it was the type of thing where um, we're in a toxic environment at practice and then we go back to our apartments and that kind of transferred over where we were like pitted against each other. We're already in harsh conditions. So yeah. like there was no support system yeah. whatsoever. Like it was like dog on dog. Everybody's talking on everyone. You couldn't trust anyone. And as you're asking about like, as I talked about in some of my YouTube videos is like, I went from like being the happiest I'd ever been when I was home for quarantine because mm -hmm. I just had like a lot of mental space and like health, like I was just felt healthy. Yeah. And then I went back to school that fall for my senior year and we were happy at first, but things got worse and worse and worse and worse. And like through just a bunch of like series of bad events, I fell into like the worst depression of my yeah. entire life just from like all the COVID stuff and like that environment, the isolation, like, and I wasn't the only one either. I knew people on my team that were just as depressed. Yeah. And let's go into that. So usually for me, soccer is like my escape from everything. Yes. Like if if crap is hitting the fan in other relationship in, in my life, like I go can show soccer. up to the field and my team culture, this is this is where we differ for sure. My team has always been like my safe space. Love that One, for you. 100%. Yeah. So I was able to get that release every time I stepped on the soccer field. And rely on them. Thank God, because I couldn't imagine the mental space I'd be in if I didn't have girls that made me feel a little bit better about myself every single day. So let's yeah. let's get into your yeah. situation because Specifically. I, I loved watching one part of your YouTube video where where you sat out of training because of COVID mm -hmm. and then you had to go get COVID tested and there was a form you had to fill out. Yes. And if it, you, you, I you give me that story time. Yeah. Because that touched me like, and it, it hit me so personally because so. you had been through something. The exact something. same thing. Yeah. So things had just progressively gotten worse. And like we said, my teammates weren't supportive. I had maybe like one good, a couple like roommates that I could rely on. But then again, we weren't really supposed to hang out anyway. Yep. And there was no support system. So these were girls that were lashing out um, in ways of like talking behind people's back, making up lies, rumors, like people were coming at you from all angles. You felt unsafe at all times. I didn't feel 
I just did not feel safe in that yeah. environment. And like going to practice, I didn't feel safe either because I had coaches who weren't the best either. Mm -hmm. So it had gotten to a certain point where I was really depressed and I had a teammate that I was confiding in about it and there was only one girl on my team that I was telling about it. Yeah. And then um, this is where like, it wasn't just, it wasn't this remotely, but it was like just a straw that broke the camel's back. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing that happened before I opted out of my season was um, one of my teammates, cause it was this mean girl energy. Um, two of my teammates fell out with each other. They were friends and they fell out. And then one of them decided um, to get back at the other girl. She invited me and like other teammates over and was like, um, told me in front of everyone that my boyfriend was sleeping with my teammate. And the teammate was the only girl on my team that I had confided in about my mental health. Just, I couldn't imagine. Like, and I'm already Speechless. at like a breaking point. So it was like, so th at that point, and she didn't do it to like help me. Like she knew that they were hooking up yeah. for a minute and then decided to come out with it. Yeah, because she wanted to get, get back, back at her. the other girl. And then embarrass me because she didn't like me either. So the next day I was like physically so sick mentally that I just couldn't even get out of bed. And with playing a sport, no matter what's going on in your life, you still have to go to practice the next day. Yeah. And so <clears throat> the next day I called sick to practice, basically said I was sick. And at the time, if you didn't go to practice because you're sick, you have to go get tested for COVID. And um, so I had to go to the center and get tested. And it was like a normal doctor appointment where you have to fill out these forms. And on the form, and I feel like I was like, this was like kind of meant to happen because I needed it to happen. Um, the form had asked the questions of like, are you depressed? Like, have you been suicidal? Are you suicidal right now? And I said yes for like all of them. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, the lady who had my appointment like came to me and she was like, we need to talk. And she was like, is this true? And then at that point I was like being honest about where I was at. And then I decided to opt Which out is after that. So hard. Yeah. Let's, let's I hadn't said it out loud, but at that point I was like, yes, like exactly. I literally can. Sometimes you need to and this is what people don't understand. Like you're feeling this inside and people are like, Why don't you just tell someone? Why don't you just tell someone? And you're like, I can barely accept it mm -hmm. in myself. Like how yeah. do you think? Because I'm a strong person and yeah. I don't want to like come off as like I can't even handle my own life. Like. And as athletes all the time, you, you said this, I have this written down because <laughs> I absolutely love it. You still have to wake up at 6 a.m. and work your booty off because if you don't, things get worse. And It'll it's just like, get worse. If you suck at training, it's not going to get better every day because you're going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And it just spirals. Like If I'm depressed and I go up. to practice and I play worse... I will and get worse adds. treatment by the coaches. Yep. They'll look at me a certain way. Yep. And then they find out that I'm depressed. They're like, oh, write her off. She's just, yeah. she's out of it. Her head's not in the game. Yeah, she's not let's, in the game. Exactly. Let's just use someone else. And I've always been, obviously, just like you, the same thing. Like, you don't want to admit that something's wrong. Because, again, there's this, there's this cloud. Stigma. There's a stigma that mental health means you're somehow weak or you're somehow yes. not fit to be a starter on the field, let's say. And that's that's how I felt. Would I would I ever have gone to my old coaches and said, listen, my head is messed up. No, right because now. they're gonna be like, They'll okay, be like, well we can't use her. Exactly. Because she's her head's You're not game. you're not mentally in the game. So mm. like you can't start. Let's yeah. let's chill you out a bit. Which is like there's mm. ups and downs to that because sometimes you do yeah. have to step back and be like I need to sit out of a training. Like, I'm just, I yes, am so you need a mental health overwhelmed day. I need a mental health The day. fact I had to lie and say that I was sick. Exactly. But I physically was. I literally couldn't go to practice, and that's a real thing. Your mental yeah. health is a real, like, health in your body. And the thing is, body. so many athletes do that. Like, like calling out sick. Calling sick. That is such a but normal thing. But it's mentally thing. sick. Like, you need yes, that. Yes, yes, 100%. I so. kind of feel like as, like, basically employees of the university, there should be given sick days. Like there should be like yeah. a few days. You should be given a number of days that you're allowed to not go. I was thinking about that when I was walking. That should home be like a union thing. Like, like you should have rights yeah. like that. You should have like <laughs> ten mental health days in a year that you can just yes. like you click a button and your coach just can't say anything. Like yeah. she, okay, she's and they can't treat you different. She, yeah, but period. even then, like there's all these NCA rules that are supposed to prevent coaches from like treating you worse because of different things, but. They, none just, of them matter. It's not the case, yeah. You like, can't place any rule to make coaches act better. Yeah, like one hundred. And I was gonna say this too about the mental health part of it. What's crazy is the one thing that our coaches like pushed on us, and I think part of the problem was we had all male coaches, so they had no like 
way of relating to us. Mm -hmm. And um, they would always say, like, in their list of, like, checklist things at the end of practice at the beginning, they're like, if your mental health is bad, if you're feeling sad, like, you have no reason to. We have so much money at this university. We have so many resources. It is your job to, like, fix it. And they said, if you need somebody, let us know. We'll do it. And then, like... It's just, it's never that easy. Like, he literally was like go get a therapist and fix it. Yeah, and fix it. <laughs> As if he wasn't contributing to our mental health problems. And it's like, how... So, obviously, let's let's backtrack here because this kind of ties in. You filled out a form, and, like, that was, that was like, your, like, your last cry for help, almost. And I was about to, because, you know, every single time you go in, no matter how sad you are, if it's like, how sad have you been in the last five days? You're like, not sad at all. I'm not yeah. going to talk about my exactly. problems with my doctor. Yep. But in that moment, I was like... Honestly, if I don't tell someone, I don't know if this will just get all the way worse yeah. to where, like, I can't go back from it, you know? Yeah, and that was, like, I'll, I'll speak on one of my experiences. I, I showed up. My tipping point wasn't, wasn't a form. It was one of my teammates. She came up to me during training, and she goes, like, you know, how, how you doing? Because you're not, you're not laughing as much, like, on the field anymore. You're not, like, you don't smile as much. And that... Bro you probably just started crying. You're my like, heart. I'm not okay. Like, I was literally like, I know that there's something wrong with me, but it's like when other teammates start noticing, I'm like, I am supposed to be this ray yeah. of sunshine on the field. That is me. That is who I am. I'm the same. And like, that was so, that's what was so crazy about going through what I went through. I, my whole life, my, I feel like my best trait is that I'm a really positive person. 100%. I look on the bright side of everything. Exactly. And I was the most depressed person I knew. Yep. But it's like, a lot of the times you think you think that people aren't noticing and then it's like it, t it takes one person to like call you out and I was just like that day I literally was like I need help how the heck do I find a therapist because clearly yes. this is translating now yeah clearly it's like it's not just me like it's it's projecting and I'm like yeah if I can't be at first it was like okay whatever if like, it's not affecting um, your soccer then yeah you know then whatever but now I'm like okay my teammates are noticing how is that affecting her and everybody else I'm like if I if I can't even get better for myself like let me at least do it for yeah. my teammates because because at that point it's like your team is depending on you yeah so. and what I like about you and I feel like we're similar is I was the same way in that when I hit the breaking point I'm like a like we're we're hard workers. We play sports. Mm -hmm. Like we want to be the best people we can be in like a lot of aspects. So when I finally like hit that wall and realized, I was like, how do I dig myself out of this? Because yeah. I want to be my best self again, and that's yeah. not who I am right now. And I feel like, that's and that's why I opted out too. Because like, yeah. and it was such a hard decision. Like I've never quit something my entire life. Yeah. I'm gonna like finish it, like be a winner, be the best. I have never quit a sport in That's my entire an life. Athlete mentality, like like we're gonna dig ourselves out of this. We're gonna get through it. We're not gonna stop. We're gonna go to the end. But it's like, you've definitely you did it. You were able to say, listen, like I need to take I myself chose, out of this. And I made the right decision because yeah. all of my teammates that stayed told me that they wish they left because mm -hmm. things got worse after I left. Mm -hmm. And also, I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't opt out. Like that gave me the opportunity to like find my happiness away from like such a toxic environment, I could have never, I don't know how much worse it would have gotten if I stayed. Yeah. And so I was able to like get away from it, build myself up, grow my self-confidence. When I came back for graduation, like four or five months later, I was at my happiest, best state. And I came back yeah. and everyone was like, you're literally glowing. And I'm like, thank you. And so what do you think contributed to that? To that? You opted out. So that allowed you to focus on what specifically? It was more content, and and you. So that's another like kind of interesting story of how yeah. I got to like here. Yeah. Um, my passion has always been making videos. I'm like a videographer, a photographer. I like to edit, and that's always just been a creative part of me since like fifth grade. And so because I was playing basketball, I never really had time for like hobbies. And one of my things that I did at Syracuse was I worked for the communications department with athletics and mm -hmm. I edited videos of sports teams and stuff like that. So when I opted out, I started my own business. Mm -hmm. I started a media production business. And call them out, call them out, shout yourself out. It's Go called on. LF Productions. It's kind of at a pause right now because I've been so busy, but I want to like start it up again. Nice. But I went to, I was in Atlanta where things were still open. So, and Atlanta's a great place to start a small business. And I was literally working for myself full time while finishing school online. 
and I grew my business, grew my, grew my clientele, and I had never had the time to do that while I was playing sport. Exactly. And when I grew that, um, that's when I eventually decided to move to LA with it. And then I moved out here and then I blew up on social media. So now I use all those same skills, but for a social media platform. Yeah, just to grow yourself. That's, that's another thing I was thinking, like you were able to kind of see a life outside of your sport before you even graduated. So you set yourself up yeah. for post-graduation, but what I find is- That's so true. Athletes are so trapped in like, I'm a D1 soccer player, like I'm playing games, I'm in season, yes. like I don't have time to think about what I'm doing after college unless yeah. it's like, go pro. That's all I hear. What do you wanna do after college? Mm. Every athlete, go pro. And it's like- Which is another world of like struggles. It's crazy, yeah. but a lot of times pe uh, coaches like, anyone anyone in administration they don't they don't give athletes a chance to like pause and think listen like yeah. if i don't have my sport who am i and what can mm. i do when i leave which is important for mental health too 100 because is. you a lot of athletes lose themselves yeah. like a lot of athletes who don't go pro after college is like they go through an identity crisis i have I? tons of friends who, who have and it's crazy. Like, I have never thought of it like that, how you told me that I had those six months right before mm -hmm. I graduated to mm -hmm. where when I graduated, I'm like, I'm already a professional. I'm in yeah. my I'm in my field. Yeah. But um, to everyone else, like even my teammates, like they graduate, they are working out f to the second they graduate and then they're just dropped into the real world yeah. with no experience. Yeah. And I actually had the chance to like get going with that because of opting out and like it's a good point that you say that because most people don't get that. Mm -hmm. And so with basketball, because I don't necessarily <laughs> understand the ins and outs of it. So I'll, I'll give you an example. In soccer, it's gonna be, I go to UCLA for college. I can play on my national team. I can okay, play for yeah. Canada. And then at the same time I'm playing for my national team, I can also go pro. So that's like the WNBA, right? Yes, but basketball is a bit different because it, um, the WNBA needs to expand right now okay. and they have like no space at all for really they have so many talented athletes coming yeah. out of college yeah. and no space for them there's not enough teams and Drake and some other like higher up people are working on um, buying a new franchise or mm -hmm. like creating a new franchise and like getting that going but that's a huge problem right now so like there's not really room in the US for professional women's basketball players but obviously everyone knows that you can go overseas and make a lot more money. Yes, and that's what I've heard. Well, there's a player stuck in Russia right now. Brittany Griner. Yeah, I don't know enough about that. I don't know either. But what a crazy what a crazy and unfortunate situation that you're not getting paid enough in the US, so now you have to go play in Russia because they're they're paying you more. I and get now stuck. God knows what happened, but now she's stuck in a terrible, terrible situation. It's like just pay your women in the US and maybe these crazy things won't happen. 100%. So on that note, did you did you ever think that you were going to go pro for basketball or did you know, listen, I'm a college athlete right now, but after after college I'm not pursuing this anymore. Um I think my negative experiences at Syracuse with basketball kind of put a bad taste in my mouth with the sport mm -hmm. and I didn't want to play it anymore. Like I literally Dang. was just playing because I'm not like I said I'm not a quitter yeah I was just playing to finish it out um I didn't look forward to playing basketball every day but um which is crazy because I graduated thinking like goodbye basketball never again yeah and then I move out here and become a basketball influencer <laughs> literally which which I love though it's it's kind of like a whole like full circle like listen crazy Take things control over it again yeah, crazy things happen in college but you owned it again mm. and you made it like my own thing exactly and now you're making content with it so best of both worlds like I feel it's like you're true. back to it it's which a is a way of looking at which it. is cool so where do you think you're gonna take this with content creation basketball do you think you want to stay known as like <laughs> I mean when I look at your page I'm like epic basketball player oh like gosh, how entertaining that. like no like <laughs> like I definitely still see you as like a full-on athlete so what do you think you want people to know you for um with the YouTube videos I did talking about my experience at Syracuse I wanted to be able to show a little more background of who I am as a person because at first posting on YouTube I'm posting videos um that anybody could find entertaining but then once I got a bulk of a following or subscribing on YouTube yeah. Um, I just wanted to back up and like talk more in depth about who I am and so I'd hope that like I wouldn't just be pegged as an athlete and people would like me for like a lot of things of who I am yeah um, but in terms of social media I would like to continue to do it but eventually 
be able to own more businesses, nice. maybe continue going with the media production business. My original goal with video stuff was to work in Hollywood as like an editor, like so. Dang, big things. What was yeah. your what did what did you graduate with? Major was um, my major was communications. My minor was marketing. Okay, so you're perfect set. for social media. You're set. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, just all like it was like what's crazy about like me doing social media now is like every talent I have in one career. Like yeah. I play basketball. Yep. Social media, videography, photography. Yeah. yeah. All in one. All in one. That is what I like about even like being on TikTok. Let's let's say like I can play soccer on there or I can do my day in the life or I like and I edit my own stuff. Like I'm yes. starting I'm starting YouTube. I mean, we'll see how that goes. Wait, we but should like, I can help. I will need your help. Let's so, do like a soccer basketball collab. See, and, post and we were talking about that, and then I decided to delete every single DM in my phone when my little crisis happened. You know, <laughs> oh, so yeah. we'll pick it up. We'll pick it oh, up. We're gonna make a YouTube video. <laughs> Amen. No, I I will definitely need that. But but again, it's like social media just allows you to bring everything you love into one space and everything that makes you who you are you can bring into your platform. Social media really has changed my life for the better in Same. so many situations. But of course, of course, but. there are the lows and there are the dark sides to social media. There's a very dark side of it. That like, I feel like that's such an LA thing. Like, oh, like LA is toxic. Everybody says is it, toxic. but it's real. And unfortunately, I didn't believe it when I was first in it. When I was all like Me too. happy skies, like I was like, you know what? Life Everyone's is like, great. Everyone's like, beware, beware. Naive. And I was like, it's going great. I was <laughs> Why naive, would I be worried? 100%. And, I would, I and then was both just... of us went through the exact same type yep. of situation yep. where we were in like public relationships that had something happen in it where we both received backlash mm -hmm. for something that people don't actually really know the ins and outs of. Yeah. But it was taken completely out of my control and then all of a sudden, tons of backlash. I was getting millions of like hate DMs and comments. Yeah. I blocked so many words in my comment filters on TikTok. Do you know how to do that? I just learned how to do that Life not saving. too long ago. <laughs> and how how sad is that? So let's, I mean, let's start from the beginning. Obviously, your relationship was public. And yours was public right from the get-go. And it wasn't even really my choice for it yeah. to be so public. It yeah. was like talking to someone who knew more about social media than mm -hmm, I did, mm -hmm. and it kind of just being taken into their arms and then being like, TikToks, yeah. YouTube, this is my girlfriend. And I'm just kind of like, all right, yeah. cool, cool, yeah. cool. We're doing it, we're doing it. But you don't know, I didn't know then, like how bad it could turn while being so public, and I'm sure you didn't and, either. And you never do, and I think that was, that was my whole thing. Like my relationship was pretty private at the beginning, and then we, you know, we opened Me up. Me too. And you open up, that door and you cannot get it back. You can't close it. There's, you can't close there it. are, there's so, like, It's open. It's <laughs> bolted shut. Let me tell you. There, I mean, it's bolted open. There's, yeah. There's no There's no way. door anymore. The once, door's gone. Once you give people access to your life. You allow them to have opinions. And a once sense of you allow them in. To, to the relationship. Everything in your life and, yes. and all the information. It's like the second you put your relationship out there, people are like, you put it out there, so now you it's owe your us fault this, you're getting this, bullied. This, and this. It's your yeah. fault you're getting bullied. Yeah. And they're like, you chose to have a platform. You should have known this came with it. I think the problem with you is you didn't choose. I mean, yeah, I blew up. Well, okay, so I didn't. Com it wasn't. I, it just felt like it was out of my control the way that the relationship was just so yeah. like publicized because the person I was with had such a big platform, and I already had a big platform myself. Mm -hmm. But of course, the side of my platform that was known as like. Like this segment of my followers that know that I'm dating this person, yeah. that grew, but that grew while I was dating him. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's like a clash there, but but again, same thing. Like we were both kind of on, got the shorter end of the stick in the sense that our people had an insane presence on social media, just like bigger than us, and it's like they're always gonna be the ones getting backed no matter what happens. And there's a power imbalance there too that is like a little unfair that even they wouldn't really understand because they're just doing their job, they're on social yeah. media, and they're like yeah. expressing their feelings in the same way that we are. Yeah. But in mine, like, it was publicly known that the breakup wasn't my fault, Yeah. but I still received all of the backlash and they got all the support. Because let's think about it, obviously, I mean, yours ended in, in drama. Quite, yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was like, he just happened to have more people defending him than people defending you, not because 
what who's you who's right and wrong not because who is right and wrong but it's who has like a sub- ratio yeah that's it and people like you said like when they comment these things it's not that deep to them like yeah. they're in bed just throwing a comment and going and to sleep and it's one comment that they do and i'm in bed too on my phone with millions yes, of those exactly. so i'm seeing every single one and that shit was like just coming flooded in and, and a again. very very low point because mm-hmm. i had like I had gotten done dirty in the relationship, I ended it, and I felt proud of myself for stepping away from something that I realized wasn't showing me what I'm worth because I deserve I someone to, you know, do you everything right. You to be treated like a queen. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, and Heck in yeah. all ways, and I was proud of myself for that. But then to feel the hurt of having to break up with that person, and then receive so much backlash, I was going through it. I was in Hawaii of all places, with my friends. It's a nice place to be. (laughs) getting cyberbullied. No matter where I went, I'm in a beautiful place. And this is what people don't realize because my comments were all saying like, literally just turn off your phone. Your phone, like it still exists. Like you're still getting stuff added to you, DM to you, and it's in your pocket all day. Like you have a pocket full of hate. Yes. You can't just get away from it. It's still there. It like just it it follows you and again it it's kind of crazy because you're in Hawaii and it's like what what a great place to be. You could turn it off all you want. You're still getting hate. But how awful is it that like all this hate is just piling onto you when in any other person's breakup like it wouldn't be online. Yeah. So they wouldn't be. They'd be. You know what? You like I'm broken up with in Hawaii. Peace. Let me let me do Live. my Hawaii thing. Yeah. But it's like you can't. You can't turn your phone off. Yeah. That's like your livelihood. Also, like yeah. that's work. You yes. can't turn it off. And, and the just, comments are relevant to what you're stop. posting. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And you try to be. There's there's two sides of it. You try to be this positive person. And you're ridiculed for, oh, how did she move on That's so That's why quick? people hated on she me because I didn't him. look sad. Yeah. And I'm like, do you know what I'm doing off camera? <laughs> no. Like, you have, again, nobody has any clue what's going on 90% of your time yes. off the screen. So we were talking about um, you can't address that you're getting hate because you'll get more hate. People yes. are, like, mad. Yes. They'll be, like, suck it up. Like, you chose this life. Yeah. They're kind of, like, bitter that someone who has a platform is complaining about anything. Yeah. So both of us, I feel like you just had to, like... For me, I just didn't say anything about it at all. Exactly. I just waited for it to blow over. And it's blown over now. And I have, yeah. like, my supporters, I feel like, support me even more now because they know more personal things about me and they, like, support my journey. Mm-hmm. But for a second, I just had to wait for that wave to go. The wave is gone and now, thank that, God. Th- like we said, the hate comes in waves. And I think... The you can't address it. No. The, the best thing that I've yeah. learned is just be quiet. That's like, exactly. as much as you want to say, listen they did this, they did this, they did this. I'm hurting. Like, have sympathy for me, please. Like, you have to beg you them. You can't. can't. Say you have to just yes. be quiet. And and honestly, the hate I get for, for not speaking on things, like, people are like, oh, you can't address this. It is so much better than you're a crap person. Like, why, why do you feel sorry for yourself? Blah, 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 blah. I know the thing about that, too, is like we said earlier, when you say those things, that opens the door for those things. Yeah. They can't hit on anything they don't know about. No. So the more you tell them how you're feeling, the more like ammo they have. Yeah. And that's why if you just stay quiet, the waves will pass, the questions will stop. Privacy is power. That has been my biggest yes. takeaway. Oh my gosh. Like <laughs> The next chapter of my life. Period. Y'all know nothing. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, like... Obviously, you've gone through this breakup. You've come out on the other side from what it looks like, right? Like, there's still ups and downs, obviously. But where would you say you're at mental health-wise right now? The last three weeks, I've been, like, my happiest best self. That's amazing. (laughs) We love this. (laughs) We love this. That's No, I mean, and, and everybody who I've talked to, like, you're doing the best you can. You always are. And I think it's, like, just being more grateful and recognizing, like, the how positives. far you've come yeah. seeing the positives again, 100%. Yeah. So what do you think is your biggest thing that you're doing right now to keep your mental health like in check and, and keeping your head okay? Um, I think you could relate to this too in that um, once you go through something really hard like I did in college, I kind of have like a setup like plan of like, okay, if I'm down A, B, C, D, E, F, G to get better, yeah, let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's faster each time because it's cycles. Like life yep. is ups and downs. So yep. now it's like... Literally the entire, like, wave of all of that hate, I'm like, all right, I'm not the happiest right now, but I'm going to be soon, and we're just going to work on it until then. You've gone through it, exactly. And I always tell myself, like, 
before all this, I was this crazy, happy, bubbly person. Same. And I know that I was that, like, I am that person now. I feel like I've definitely, like, Me too, dug myself yeah. out of a lot of places. But it was, like, yeah. I was this person before this terrible, traumatic thing happened to me. Yeah. And I am going to get there again. I can't. That was my motivation, 100%. too, because I was mad that I lost who I was mm -hmm. because I liked who I was. I was pissed and at And I myself. was looking in the mirror, yes. like, who am I? Yes. And that's, like, I, I think that's the hardest thing is, like, you look yes. at yourself and you're, like, why the frick am I not this happy yeah. perfect perfect person that but I was. someone that you're proud of because you work hard to be who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're your happiest self, like, I feel like we're similar in this, like, it just shines through. Like, you can tell. Like, when you're your best self, like, literally, at the times when I got through what I went through at Syracuse and I came out the other way, mm -hmm. all of my friends were like, you look so happy, we love it. Even the ones that I wasn't seeing in person, anything I posted, the way I was, the way I was acting, like they were like, you're just glowing, like you're yeah. exploding with like joy. That's like, that has been the biggest compliment to me now. Not yes. like, oh my gosh, your hair looks amazing. I love your outfit. You look it's happy. Like, you I'm look like, happy and I'm like, thank you. Oh, it's taken a lot of work. It I'm like, you have no idea how work. much that means. To yeah, you. literally. So obviously we've, we've dug into the lows. Um, dug right in. <laughs> but gosh, life has so many highs. What would you say your proudest or, or most high moment, most fulfilling moment has been? I think fulfilling wise, when I was able to actually, after going through COVID during college, when I graduated, I don't know. I can't even explain like how great that felt because for two whole years in college, it was affecting everything. Mm -hmm. And then in New York, COVID stopped like for a couple yeah. weeks. They opened everything like two weeks before graduation. So the moments like coming back to Syracuse and facing all the girls around my team, facing my coaches, facing anyone who had caused me like harm in the past and um, being my best self and showing who I was at that time. And like I said, there was that drama with like my teammate, boyfriend, whatever, whatever. I ended that relationship at that exact time too, around graduation. And I moved to LA with my own money, started my own business. And I'm just so extremely proud of myself for like the path of like being at my complete lowest to literally digging myself out like yeah. day by day, starting my own business, moving out here and making a name for myself. I just feel like I literally did that. Like you that's did what that. makes me like happy and like that's what pissed me off about like some of the um the way people like will point fingers at me for like you don't deserve this, you don't deserve that. I'm like you don't know anything yeah. about like what I've been through yeah. to say that. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. 100%. I mean, you went from the lowest to like the, the highest, highest, which is something to always remember. Like that's what got me out of my recent low yes. is knowing that the lows create the highs. The, it's a roller coaster. Yeah. But you can't get much lower than, <laughs> than where I was. Like, yeah. And it's such a it's it's a great thing to tell yourself. So on on that note, routines, do you have any self care self things care. that just like make you happy? This is a great question because I have like very specific things I do now nice, because nice. of what I've been through. One of the things I did to get out of the slump I was in was like positive affirmations. So literally every morning I would write, I would do like a brainstorm thing where I have to just write, 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 write. Like I would make a list of everything I'm grateful for right this second. And sometimes you have to just say like my cat, my, the food I ate this morning, my family. Basic. But, super, but and it like, helps. Yes. And then one thing I learned from one of my friend's therapists, they told me, was um, talk about things that you're looking forward to because that's about loving life and seeing a bright side of things. Focusing so, on the future. So I would turn yeah. the page in my like notebook and I would say... Um, things I'm looking forward to because if you're depressed you need something to look forward to because you think life sucks so I'm like I'm looking forward to the coffee I'm about to go get I'm looking forward to this event that I'm going to in two weeks I would just write all that down and then I'd write everything I like about myself and my life and then I'd try to just enforce those things nice yeah. those are good ones I I like the affirmations for sure I mean again I've I've talked to multiple people it's it's the sticky notes on the mirror yes it's, and it's like, like I love just stuff like that but um another conversation was like showers like skincare routine mine yes. is mine is my skincare routine because it reminds me of my mom we used to do it together love that. but like just like those like physical touch yes. self-care like like, I'm if I'm not getting a hug that, that day, then, yes. like, yeah, like, I need to give myself something yes. to, like, make myself feel like I've just been hugged. And people think that physical touch is just about kissing, hugging, no. romantic things. But I realized I've been getting, um, like, bi-weekly massages because it feels 
amazing. That's such a good one. And I'm not even, I'm not in a relationship now, so it's like, there's more to like loving yourself yes. than like what other people can like yeah. provide to you. Yeah. So it's like doing stuff like that. Going for a hike, that's why I love sports, like physical things. Working out, just like makes your body Self-care is yep. a huge thing. Like I love to feel clean. I like my space to be clean. Yep. Eating Focusing. healthy food makes you feel better. Oh, heck yeah. Alrighty, so we're gonna go to a more funny side of things. Get to know <laughs> you on a, on a different level. A um, level. <laughs> we're gonna play a game called Date, Marry, Unfollow. Okay. So I'm gonna give you three names and then you can choose who you wanna do what with. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> David Beckham. Do you know who that is? That's okay, a soccer, soccer player. <laughs> okay, David He's Beckham. He's attractive, right? I think so. My mom I'm loves him. I'm thinking of like, I think I, yeah, I know who yeah. I know what it looks like. Devin Booker. Do you know who that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and then RJ Nembard. Who? <laughs> uh, R come on. I need a refresher on who that is. On who RJ is? Really? Really? Oh. Okay. Do you have a photo? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll flash you. We'll flash you. Does this look familiar? Oh. 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 From my YouTube Oh. <laughs> Anyways. So, do we, we have opinions or? What were the first two names? David Beckham, Devin Booker. Mm. Mm. <laughs> this is hard. Um, well, I know less about soccer than basketball. I think he's a very attractive male. I do, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna unfollow him. Unfollow my boy, David. You can have him. I'll, oh wait, true. I'm gonna oh, give him to you. Thank you. That was kind. I just gave you the oop. <laughs> Boom. Thanks. Dunk it. Anyways. <laughs> Okay, I will date Devin Booker, and since I actually know RJ a little bit, we get married. So casual. We'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. I don't know Devin Booker. <laughs> we could date. Fair. We okay. can get to know each other. Yeah. Take her <laughs> out. You heard her. We're going to keep this one in the family. Let's do the Ball Brothers. <laughs> so we've got, I really hope I pronounce these right, Lamello, Leangelo, and Lonzo. That was right. For Boom. Sure. This is funny. I feel like I, I don't know them personally, but I know a lot of people who do. Mm -hmm. um, it is a game, so I'm not stepping on any toes here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Um, I would. Okay. I'm going to dump Leangelo so just I'm because I don't really know him. Unfollow. Oh, oh, unfollow. <laughs> dump. I'm not even dating him. <laughs> I haven't even gotten there yet. Unfollow. <laughs> and I'm going to date. Lamello, and then Mary Lonzo. Okay, okay. And now, last one. We're we're bringing this to the influencer world. <laughs> Let's see. We've got Bryce Hall, Josh <laughs> Richards, and Larray. Larray. What's funny? I actually I've never met Josh Richards. We know a lot of the same people, but me and Bryce Hall played basketball at a party. i because yeah, I've met Bryce. Well, I've seen him. He's not around. as tall as I thought. I think he I might was. be taller than him. I, but it yeah. was hilarious because it was this like kind of like gathering, and I was with two of my teammates from college, and I brought them, and we're like, "This is kind of boring. Everyone's standing around." And there was a basketball court, so we went over there. We started shooting. Was it hoops. the Triller Compound? No. Oh, because I was gonna say it that's was where everybody went to ball. Oh, it was like little Huddy and them's house. Oh, right. And okay. um, yeah, so we just go over there, start shooting. Literally the entire party came to us, and it turned into a 1v1 match between my 6'3 teammate and Bryce, and I filmed the whole thing. Stop. It was so funny. Oh, my because gosh. Because there were these tall-ass girls. They literally yeah. played on the French national Against team. It's like, little Bryce. Yeah. Okay, anyways, let's get back to the question. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, date, marry, unfollow, Bryce, Josh, Larray. Okay, so I've also met Larray, and we don't, like, Play for the same team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So That's, in terms of dating yes. and marrying, okay, I'm good. sorry, I will follow like you <laughs> in the game. <laughs> and then um, we could marry Josh. Why not? And then okay. we could date Bryce. Love. <laughs> Love. Approved. <laughs> Approved. All right. So I don't get why, like, I have to answer <laughs> all these questions and be on the spot. So let's give you one. Oh, okay. Hit me with them. Are you ready? Ready. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do Kendall Jenner, Haley Bieber, and Cara Delevingne. Okay. Okay. 
We're I'm, doing supermodels. <laughs> I'm gonna unfollow Haley Bieber. Okay. I'm gonna date Kara. Just date. I say date because I think that she'd just be way too whoa for me in like a marriage. <laughs> Whoa, and like her personality, like just personality. Like oh, she's she very a big much like I feel like I just I just want to sit on the couch and she'd be playing like <laughs> I don't know I don't know what she'd be doing. But yeah, definitely you and Kendall would buy Kendall. Come on, your girl. Heck yeah! I was gonna say though, you and Kara would make a really nice couple. That's a very like much just a compliment. picture her sitting. If next you're her. seeing this, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm throwing the oop well, here. <laughs> whoop. <laughs> If you're then, into it. If well, you're into soccer players. Thanks. Yeah, if you're into soccer... No, just <laughs> I won't say it. Uh, oh, my gosh. Okay, fired. That's Wait, a also, how are you going to date my boyfriend's girlfriend? Oh, right. So, I say... I said I, I, said I was dating Devin. Kendall and Devin break up. And then we... I date Devin and you date. Yeah, it's one it, of those. It like it's makes one sense. of those. <laughs> Boom. Easy. Easy. If they're into it, we're into it. Yeah. Hit us up. No, I'm just <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm dead. Okay, so that last game was very fun. Very, very fun. fun. You know, <laughs> we'll we'll see who we come out with from, from that list of names. We'll, we just shot know, a lot of shots. Future us. We'll we'll, we'll come back we and we'll tell you how it worked out. Um <laughs> no, but it was awesome to have you on here. We thank we you definitely me. got real deep on this one. So thank you, as always. Um main message of this, keep kicking, always. That let's, was great. Let's, let's that was a plug. great plug of the That's, name. Yeah, I know. Literally keep going. Like Keep, keep kicking, kicking the soccer ball. Keep kicking through the, the lows and the highs. Oh, yes. my gosh. The low, low. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> that was like two jokes in one. All right. Um, All right. You're plug, done. <laughs> plug yourself up. Where where can everybody find you? Um, My ads on actually everything are Lolo Fitzmo on YouTube. Lolo Fitzmo. TikTok, Lolo Fitzmo. Instagram, Lolo Fitzmo. Twitter, Lolo Fitzmo. Everybody has... Like their name just on every social channel, and I'm here like different at all. Of Again, them. I've said this. This is the second time. I'm different on every single one. Damn. That's a me problem. So I'll fix that. I'll fix it. Well, when you we'll get, get like back. enough of a platform, you could just let Instagram know that that username is yours. Boom. Take it. You know, just be like, hey, Instagram. Come on. So like this come girl, on, she doesn't deserve this username. It's my yeah. name. Yeah. Boom. Kick her off the. Give it to me. The <laughs> platform. All right, so on top of all our socials, we're gonna be doing a nice little YouTube collab. Come, come find us. Come find us. If we'd like to see us again soon. You know, and also, obviously, tune in, watch this podcast on Past Your Bedtime on YouTube. It will be out Monday, twelve noon. Also, catch us on all streaming platforms if you just want to listen to the pod. Don't forget to keep kicking, guys. Have a great one.